I never said yes and I never said no. You know, I just, it was more, you felt like this person needs their fantasies and it was like, okay, George, come on. You know, I'll see you tomorrow, or whatever. And that sounds dismissive, but it wasn't dismissive because you didn't know half the time with George what was real and what wasn't real. Very few people followed him uh, on, on his last way to his grave. There were maybe 10 people there on a cold January day in 1975, at least half of whom were George's last companions on the streets of, of London. You know, homeless people upon whom he had descended like an angel almost to try to help him, uh, who had no idea that he was a scientist of any kind. And then two of the great scientists of the age, uh, Bill Hamilton and, and John Maynard Smith. So there were very few, and, and I think Hamilton and, and Maynard Smith were really uh, the very small minority of important scientists who were, uh, who, 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 had, who had understood George's contribution. George Price's extraordinary work validated many conflicting views simplifying and unifying complex ideas about the evolution of behaviour. But in the end, Price felt that science could no longer answer the questions that he wanted to ask. Perhaps his own conclusions that we are being driven blind towards our destinies by the unseeable powers of our genes was too much for this sensitive man whose science was unhinged by his emotion. Has proved to all who live that death itself is freedom forevermore